previously on Still Timber Sports Australia. At round three in Queensland, O'Toole trumped championship lead ahead at the start of the day. And it was a sign of things to come for the Victorian. There was a battle for the top with Meyer. And Delosa all taking their earned position. And it was O'Toole who was the one to beat, taking home four heat victories for the day. He now shares the top position with fellow rivals Head and Delosa coming into today. We're at Sandown, Victoria, for the fourth of five rounds of the Steel Timber Sports Australian Championship. With the atmosphere buzzing and the competitors preparing for the day ahead, let's see what we're in for. Victorian larrikin Lawrence O'Toole is back. Will his raw talent translate into a title? Wiley veteran Matt Gurr brings his lifetime of experience. Jamie Head's the consistent all-rounder. And the super fit Brad DeLosa wants his name on the crown. 22-year-old Mitch Argent heads up Generation Next. Reigning champion Braden Meyer wants to go back to back. Cody Steers is the youngest athlete, but can he outmuscle his peers? And Brody Dingle is desperate for his slice of still timber sports glory. Over five rounds, they battle it out across Australia in six gruelling disciplines, from the gravity-defying springboard to the blood-pumping hot saw. In each discipline, top place is awarded eight points, zero for a disqualification. The five best athletes will represent Australia at the World Championships as a chopper with the winner of the series taking on other national winners to become the still Timber Sports World Champion. So, with all that in mind, let's get into our first event. The springboard imitates an old lumberjack technique to overcome hard root wood. The athletes cut two pockets in a vertical log 2.7 metres high. With the help of the springboard, they climb to the top and cut through a 27 centimetre diameter log from both sides. Strength, speed and agility are needed for a win. Opening the springboard heats, we have still timber sports statesman Matt Gurr from Tasmania against 2015 Chopperoo Mitch Argent from Queensland. At the start of the Steel Timber Sports season, Gurr held the Australian springboard record and was considered almost unbeatable in this discipline. How things have changed. The record is now held by Brad DeLosa from New South Wales, with Gurr's personal best only 0.01 behind DeLosa. Gurr's into his second board ahead of Argent. Ah, oh, his axe is stuck. He works to retrieve it. Argent gaining ground. The young Queensland, he's a strong hitter with the axe. These are some powerful strokes. Both competitors now going hard at the top block. They'll need to attack from both sides. At the moment, they're both ripping into the front with chunks of wood being sent flying. Gurr has turned. He's working on the back section of the log. So is Argent, and Gurr's been upset again in his pet event. And he nearly falls on his last blow. And in the next springboard heat, we see the first of our joint leaders, Jamie Head, against local boy Braden Meyer as they try and reel in Mitch Argent's time. Meyer comes close at 52.99. Three, two, one, up. Oh. Final heat of the springboard, Victoria's Lawrence O'Toole on the left against New South Welshman Brad DeLosa. Both axemen are sitting on top of the championship ladder with Jamie Head after three rounds of competition. Delosa and O'Toole are looking for that second board. O'Toole slightly ahead as Delosa jumps onto his. He puts the first hit in, but Delosa is starting to knock out some big chunks. Could he catch the Victorian? They're 2.7 metres in the air right now, but they aren't holding back. They are as confident up there as they are on solid ground. With the springboard being the first event today, both Axemen know the importance of a good start here and how it can set the tempo for the rest of the day. O'Toole makes the turn first. He cuts through in two strokes. Delosa's not far behind. And there you have it, but O'Toole wins the heat and the discipline. Yeah, my springboard was pretty good. Boys in the earlier heat cut some really good times, so they had the pressure on. And I like that. I like going out, having something to really go for and try and uh, prove myself. So it was good to be able to get through that and come out with a win. That's O'Toole's second straight win for the springboard. Argent was a surprise package today in a speedy 48.42 seconds. O'Toole's off to a strong start on his home turf in Victoria. Can he stay on top of the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard and win the Sandown crown? The still stock saw is the first of our soaring events. 
Athletes run equally matched electronic engine managed MS661CM chainsaws available from any steel store. Placing both hands on the trunk of the 40 centimetre block, athletes reach for their chainsaws on the sound of the gun and cut two perfect cookies within the allocated 10 centimetres of wood or face the dreaded DQ. All in all, it's mind over matter and mastery of the chainsaw that get a stock saw win. First up in the stock saw is Cody Steers from Tasmania against Queenslander Brody Dingle. These guys are looking really comfortable on their down cut. Thin cookies and they drop in fine fashion. Dingle ahead of Steers, let's see on the up cut. Dingle takes it at 13.04. That's it. The next stock saw showdown pits Mitch Argent against Matt Gurr, chasing Dingle's time to beat. Gurr usually does well in this discipline. He's often at the top of the points, but he's half a second off Dingle. Hands on the wood. That's it. It's Jamie Head against Lawrence O'Toole in the next heat. Queensland ahead is on a mission after a disappointing sixth place stock saw finish from last round at Ipswich. Head is the chopper who stock saw it, but O'Toole has hit some form. Head leads and he gets the win by a mile. 12.39 seconds, he's in the lead. After my springboard didn't go so well, I was super nervous before that stock saw, but just getting them two clean discs in the 12 second range was exactly what I was planning to do and uh, I'm extremely happy. With Jamie Head currently holding the best time, can Braden Meyer or Brad DeLosa come through with a win in the stock store? With the Steel Timber Sports Series rolling into Sandown, Victoria, Jamie Head is holding the best time of the round in the stock saw, and it's up to Brad DeLosa or Braden Meyer to knock him off his perch. I'm fired up, definitely. I want to win this, so stick it right up him, so hopefully I can do that. You can guarantee DeLosa feels the same. Here he goes against Meyer. Both have good, clean starts. DeLosa holds the Australian record in the stock saw, and he's ahead of Meyer now. They'll go close to Jamie Head's time, but will they beat it? No, Andalosa loses his balance. Head's time holds up for the stock saw. He takes the win and some valuable competition points. A good finish for Dingle with Maya coming in a close third. Head's now challenging O'Toole for the sand down lead. It's tied at the top of the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard. Being top of the leaderboard after two rounds is uh, pretty exciting. Heading into the Jumping events, I hope I can hold on to the lead. The standing block is the second axe event of the day where athletes simulate an old school technique of felling a tree with an axe. Each athlete scribes their scarf on the 30 centimetre vertically mounted block and then slay at least 50% of the front side before traversing and turning to remove the back half, finalising their hit patterns with ripping overhand drives. Here we go, Brad DeLosa and Jamie Head. They're both experienced axemen. Can their standing block techniques prove good? DeLosa turns around the back in front of Head. DeLosa clocked a slow 22 seconds for this discipline last round in Queensland, while Head is yet to match his win from round one, so they're both due. Now Head's starting to drive. DeLosa's driving. It's DeLosa, and then Head by two hits. It'll be interesting to see where I'm sitting after this, but yeah, hopefully with a couple of strong performances in the next couple, I'll be back up there. We pick up the action with Matt Gurr against an informed Brody Dingle from Queensland. Dingle gets the win and the clubhouse lead. Now it's Mitch Argent on the left against Cody Steers, the Tasmanian rounding the block first. But Argent is a standing block specialist. He's reeling Steers in. 
chunks of water flying. And Argent wins. And the heat is on in the Battle of the Victorians. Braden Meyer and Lawrence O'Toole. Meyer is still in a position to defend his 2015 still Timber Sports Australia title. And he's undefeated in the standing block this year. Meyer turns first and he is charging. But he has a very strong axeman next to him. Can they spur each other on to eclipse Argent's time? Yes, it's Meyer with the win and the eight points. I certainly want to do my best because I want to be number one again and try and repeat last year. So it's chopping specialist Meyer in front for the standing block. He beat O'Toole, but only just. Mitch Argent's time earned him a handy six points. O'Toole remains in top position on the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard with Meyer joining him. Best thing that could happen from now on. Um, come out with a top three single back cut for me. That'll be really handy. And then um, cut a really good underhand. That'll be nice. For those of you lucky enough to watch the Steel Timber Sports 2016 Australian Championships here in person, you will know what I am about to say. The pressure is intense. You can feel the power, you can hear the roar, it's the full tilt action. So how do our athletes cope both on the stage and off? We hit the guys up for some behind the stage secrets. I thought, I don't know. I thought Brad Delosa was a celebrity, you know, like <laughs> long walks on the beach. He had a question about himself on who wants to be a millionaire. Uh, I think if that sort of stuff, you've made it, you know, so, yeah. Favourite still product to use at home would probably be the 661. Um, I'm an arborist by trade, so always using a saw every day. Um, but yeah, it's, they're good saws. Both. If that cut doesn't go well, it can ruin the next couple of cuts that are coming up, so I find it very mental more so than physical. Well, they voted out Lawrence. He just gets winning everything all the time. The single buck is a two metre long cross cut handsaw, fittingly nicknamed the Misery Whip. It's the most physically demanding of the six steel timber sports disciplines. With its peg and raker system, the athlete pushes and pulls the single buck saw through a 46 centimetre pine log. Their wedger oils the saw and drives a wedge between the cookie and trunk to help avoid friction hang-ups. It's a true test of teamwork, fitness, power and technique. The single buck battle begins between Victorians Braden Meyer and Lawrence O'Toole. Three, two, one, go! Both kick off with a classic pull start. The objective is to maintain long, flat strokes. Meyer's saw just buckled slightly. That will not help his time. O'Toole is showing perfect technique, and that wedge is about to go in. O'Toole looking really flat and perfect. Can Meyer catch him? No, it's going to be O'Toole, and that is going to cost Meyer. With Lawrence O'Toole top of the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard after three disciplines, can he stay there with arch rival Brad Delosa still to cut? Back at Sandown, it's time for up-and-coming Cody Steers to take to the saw in the Steel Timber Sports' most difficult event. I've known Cody since he was about four years old, and I've coached him on and off since he was a little boy, and it's great to see him come through as a fellow Tasmanian and, and see him do well. Contestants ready. 
And we are off and soaring. Cody Steers versus Brody Dingle. Meyer is returning the favour and wedging to Steers, and Mitch Argent is assisting Dingle. The Queenslanders' highest single buck finish this year is third. Meyer has gone second, and so far they're fairly evenly matched. Steers is going to get the better of Dingle today. He does, with a personal best of 18.8 seconds. Three, two, one, go. Brad DeLosa is sitting seventh on the VW Amarok leaderboard for the day, and Jamie Head is sixth. It's unusual for either athlete to be so low on the rankings. They're both champion lumberjacks on the national and international stage. This is one of DeLosa's favourite events, and he is machine-like. It's DeLosa's day with Head four seconds behind. Looks like Brad DeLosa is on a comeback. It's been an average day for Brad DeLosa, but he's back with a near-perfect single buck. This was another good discipline for O'Toole, while Steers finally found a positive for the day. O'Toole is into the outright lead on top of the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard, and DeLosa is starting to look dangerous. Look, it was great to get a win, you know, in the um, in the single buck. Sort of one of my favourite events, I suppose. So you've got to be consistent then. Just got to put my best foot forward and hopefully, you know, go well in the next couple. I'm third generation axeman. My dad, he was a world champion axeman himself, and my grandfather, Jack O'Toole. The key to my success would definitely have to be my family. I played a lot of other sports, but wood chopping was the one that was drawn to me through watching my dad compete and wanting to emulate what he did with his career. Probably, uh, second act is better. I was definitely lucky to have a great coach, my dad. He's been there before, knows what to do, but in saying that, a lot of hard work was put in by myself on my own. I've won 471 championships, 53 Australian titles, 33 world titles. I've been Australian Axeman of the Year seven times. Which one have you been using? So even though I've won a lot of championships, two events I've never won before are the Dill Timber Sports Australia Championship and the World Championships in Europe. I'd really love to win them. I'm Lawrence O'Toole from Doncaster, Victoria, and you're watching the 2016 Steel Timber Sports Australian Championship. The underhand chop is the final axe event of the day and resembles the old school technique of cutting felled trees down to size. 32 centimetre blocks are horizontally held in steel cradles as the axemen strike circular blows just centimetres from their feet. After removing approximately 50% of the front side, they pirouette to the back, devastating their block with power and precision, eventually driving the wood in two. O'Toole and DeLosa are next. Three, two, one, go. It's one versus three, five points separating them, so this underhand chop couldn't be more important. They're both cutting really well on the front of their log. O'Toole is renowned as one of the best underhand cutters in the world and turns way ahead of DeLosa. It looks like he'll carry through the advantage to the end. He knows victory is close and he starts to really drive. It's not textbook, but it's a win. Small win, but Braden's won, I think, all the qualifiers so far on the underhand, so he'll probably beat my time in the next round. We join the underhand chop during Queensland and Mitch Argent's duel with Tasmania's Cody Steers. This should be close. Oh, it's a photo finish. On the replay, they are synchronised, but Steers narrowly takes it. I've had some pretty close ones. That's as close as it gets, really. Oh, unless it's a, a dead eight. I'm the world champion down there, and Australian champion, I own the world record. I would like to get the win here. Three, two, one, go. Meyer is the certain favourite, but can he live up to the hype against Jamie Head? Wow, there's certainly no question that Meyer is all business on his home turf. He turns first and is continuing at a blistering pace. Head has fallen behind, but Meyer hasn't backed off. There's pride in this. He wanted the bragging rights and he gets them. Head is three seconds behind. This could have real implications for the standings with one discipline to go. Braden Meyer wasn't troubled, remaining undefeated in the underhand this season. He edged out O'Toole again. Those two are developing a fierce rivalry that's only going to intensify. And here's why. The Hot Saw is the only event remaining and it's a two-man race at the top of the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard. Yeah, I've grew up watching Lawrence because I'm only young and the rivalry is pretty big because the O'Toole and the Meyer family is, we're probably the two biggest families in Australia, chopping. And um, well, me and Lawrence are up now in the hot saw. It'll be a tough event.
The Hot Saw is the final event of Steel Timber Sports competitions and the most critical soaring event of the day. With custom-built chainsaws weighing in excess of 30 kilograms running 300 plus cc motorcycle or jet ski engines, these adrenaline-filled power saws clock up chain speeds in excess of 250 kilometres an hour. Athletes must cut three complete cookies in just 15 centimetres of the 46 centimetre diameter block. Jump the gun, cut over the line or incomplete cookie will result in a DQ and end any chances of being crowned the champion. The top two performers for the day, Braden Meyer and Lawrence O'Toole are about to battle it out in the hot saw. The sand down title is on the line and the pressure is suffocating. Hands on the wood, gets it. They're neck and neck on the upcut. Will O'Toole catch him? Wow, that is a close finish. Only 0.09 of a second between them. With three safe cookies needed for a scoring cut, will Braden Meyer's time handle the heat? Sand down and onto the last discipline, the hot saw. With Braden Meyer banking a lightning speed cut, he's looking to finish three positions ahead of Lawrence for the overall event win. But for the others, there is more at stake, and that is the all important Australian team selection for the Chopper Roos. I can't actually win today, but I can I can gain a couple of places with the hot saw. And you know, I'm still in that in a position where I can vie for that fifth spot in the team. Matt Gurr is sitting eighth overall today. He not only wants to get ahead of Cody Steers in his heat, but he also needs to beat Brody Dingle and Mitch Argent. They're chasing down a time of 7.05 set by Braden Meyer. It looks like the master Gurr has beaten the apprentice Steers off the time, but a new personal best. The hot tour event, from my perspective, is made up of probably three key pillars. You've got the actual motor, you've got the chain, and then the operator, and each one of those is crucial to a good run. Mitch Argent, Brody Dingle, both looking for that good run. Good starts and clean first cookies. Argent fumbles, but Dingle surges. He's done, but Argent's still going. That is a disappointing way to finish the day. Anytime you can pick up that saw and have a good clean cut and get your three rings and get points is a good thing. After round two in Tasmania, Jamie Head was leading the Steel Timber Sports Championship, but entering today, he was in a three-way share of the lead with Brad DeLosa and Lawrence O'Toole. Head and DeLosa can't catch O'Toole today, but they can still win the hot saw. DeLosa and Head are in the starters' hands. Hands on the wood. Get set. They're going for an eight-point cut here, and Brad Delos is on fire. And he sets a new Australian record. Head behind, and we'll have to settle for fourth. Both cuts are good. You know, it's always good to get a record, but uh, that's not really what, we, you know, what you're out there for. You're out there to win the competition, and unfortunately today, things didn't go that well, and I was disappointed, you know, to, to finish up how I did. A small win for Delos, then a new Australian hot saw record. A full second behind were Braden Meyer and Lawrence O'Toole. Overall, on the Volkswagen Amarok leaderboard, Meyer couldn't get the jump on O'Toole, who went back-to-back -back after winning the round in Ipswich. O'Toole is now the outright championship leader and in formidable form. He needs a top-two finish in the fifth and final round of Steel Timber Sports Australia to lift the championship trophy. Always good to win. You have to back it up. It's uh, pretty special. It's always good to be up front on the leaderboarding, having them chase me, so 
pressure's on everyone, not just you know me to maintain that lead. They've got to chase, so it's always hard to come from behind. Next time on Still Timber Sports Australia, our top eight will battle and the series winner will be decided. So join us next week for more of the original extreme sport, Still Timber Sports.